Hi and welcome to your 18th iOS programming tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you how to save and load data and particular text within an iOS application. This can be useful in a number of scenarios and what we're going to be doing today is creating a, an application there'll be a text field that you can enter some text when the application closes the text will be automatically saved and then when they load up the application again the text will still be there. Normally what you notice would happen if, if you tried to do this is that the text would uh, go away essentially and when you load up the application it was gone. So there's a few things that this is good for. One is state restoration so that you can save what your app is doing at a particular time when it's closed so that when the user goes back to it they're at the current uh, place that they were before. And there are other ways to do this but NS user defaults which is what we're using today to save and load data is a very useful way. It's also useful for passing data between views. Anyway, let's get started. So, open up Xcode and create a new Xcode project. I'm just going to call mine NS user defaults, uh, NS user defaults saving data, as that's what we're pretty much doing. And NS user defaults is iOS's way of saving data. Um, organization name, company, bundle, class, prefix, and devices, again, are all up to you, and it doesn't really make a difference to this application. So click Next and find a location to save your project, and then click Create. We'll start in main.storyboard by adding a text field where the user can enter the text they wish to save. So add a text field, and I'll just make mine slightly bigger. And then we need to hook up an outlet for this text field so that the user, uh, we can get the text from the text field so as to allow us to access that text and save that text. So go into your assistant editor, again that little tuxedo icon in the top right corner. Make sure automatic is selected and view controller.h. Then click on your text field and after the add interface line in view controller.h, Add a opening curly bracket and press enter. Xcode will insert the closing curly bracket. Then right click and drag on the text field and drag it in between the two curly brackets. Let's just call this text field. Then click connect. Now go back into your single view editor and into viewcontroller.m. In here we need to add a couple of things. The first thing we need to do is add void view did appear and void view did disappear. Well, we don't really need to add void view did appear, but it's always useful to do so. And we could instead do view will appear, and then we won't have any problems with the text appearing after the application's loaded. What view did appear and view will appear are essentially when the application opens, or this particular view opens, which is in this case the application. So when the application opens, view will appear is called upon. So any code you put inside view will appear happens when the application opens. Any code you put inside view will or view did disappear happens when the application, like literally milliseconds before it closes. So let's add dash void view will appear, bool animated, and then add an opening and closing curly bracket. And then underneath that method, not inside of it, type void view will disappear, bool animated. And again, do your curly brackets. We can ignore view did load as we won't be using that. That's only called every time the application pretty much quits and then reloads, but we want the text to stay there all the time. So inside view will appear, we need, or v let's start in view will disappear. When the application is about to close, we need to save the text of the text field. So let's create an ns string, and we'll call this text of text field equals text field dot text. So that's just creating a string where we've saved our text field text. Now we need to actually save this string here into the phone's memory. To do this, open two square brackets and type NS user defaults, standard user defaults. Then close that first set of square brackets, and then inside the second set of square brackets, type set object text of text field for key, and then add a semicolon, and then for the key to add talking mic, talking mark, and my text. This is essentially a string of key, but type ahead won't appear if you need to reuse the key, and I'll explain all the code in a moment. So don't worry about it for now. Let's just enter in the code, make sure it works, and then I'll explain it all. Now inside view will appear, type ns user defaults, and then uh, an asterisk, 
text and then we'll just shorten it to def def equals our open square brackets and let's use the default standard use the default then we need to do another ns string um, we'll just call it the text equals uh, and then the name of our ns user defaults which is text def and then um, we need to do object for key and the name of our key which was my text we could also do string for key so let's do that so we've got ns user defaults uh, asterisk text def equals ns user defaults and user defaults and ns string the text equals text def string for key my text then we just need to go text field dot text equals the text let me explain all this code starting at the bottom actually so as the view is closing or as the application is closing we're creating an ns string which is whatever text is in our text field so say you've entered some text into the text field this string here now equals that text so then we're creating an instance of ns user defaults and just no ordinary user defaults and ns user defaults is a file system essentially it's like saving a document on your computer so we're just saying uh, ns user defaults so we need to tell it that we're using ns user defaults and then we're just setting in the object which is our text so we're setting or saving saving this object or this text for a key and the key is like the file name so if you have two keys that are the same so if I wanted to say the text field's text and another text field's text and I kept the keys the same, I'd get I wouldn't get errors, but each file would just overwrite each other. It's like having two files on your computer with the same name in the same location. So always use a different key for different um things that you're storing. Then when the view's opening, so we might have quit the application, then open the application again. We're creating another NS user defaults, but this time we're creating it separately because there's no way to do these two lines in one line like we've done down here. And then we're creating another string, and that string is equal to the NS user default. So again, we need to access NS user defaults, and then we're getting a string from this key or from this file name. And what's saved at this file name? Well, as we uh, select it when we do view will disappear, the thing at that file name is our um, text and the text field. So then we've got the text that we've saved here, and then we're just saying the text fields text, let's set it back to the text. The reason we're doing that is because um, well, otherwise the text field text would stay the same. So this line here, if you wanted to just save the data and do something else with it, don't bother with this line here or this line here. The actual code to save the data is this line here, and whatever you want to save, put that here, and the file name, put that here. Then to actually restore that data, type this line here, and then depending on what type of data you're saving, in this case I'm doing a string, type the type of data, <coughs> and then give it a name. And for a string you've got to do an asterisk, remember? And then we just need to say it equals the name of our NS user defaults, this line here, and then the type of data, in this case a string, for key, and then the um, key, or the file name that we set down here. Make sure that this is the same. For example, if I accidentally here put my rex, for example, then I'd just get errors and it wouldn't work. If I wanted to say save an integer, I could just do ns integer and then my int equals again the text defaults and then integer for key and then the name of the key which would, might be my number or it could still be my text but I would need to save uh, text then. See here I'm setting the object if I wanted for an integer it would actually be set integer. If you're not sure whether to be setting objects or integers or what to set just try typing set and then scroll view, scroll through and see if um, your type of variable, say you're using a URL or an integer, exists here. If it doesn't then you probably just need to use set object. Don't worry if you didn't understand that much. Let's just run the application and see if it works. So I'm going to just run the application in the simulator. The one thing about the simulator is when you click stop it completely pretty much erases all the data from memory. So it's good when you're using NS user defaults to actually test it on a real device. So let me enter some text here. I'll just type hello. Now I'm just going to click run again. Now it'll prompt me whether I want to stop the it from running. So I do want to stop it. Don't press stop because sometimes iOS doesn't respond well. And as you can see here, it hasn't. This is because of the simulator. What we need to do now is fix up this issue. As I said, the issue with the simulator is when you click stop, it erases everything. It's like deleting the application from your device. 
So I click run. Then when it's running, click stop. And then go back into the simulator and locate your application. Click on the application. And now you can enter some text. So I'll just type hi again. And now just double click the home button or command shift H twice. So command shift HH. And then um, close your application within the simulator as if you were using a real device. Now you can try going back into it and seeing if it's saved. As you can see now it has saved. So that's one nuance about the simulator that you'll need to get used to. And uh, that wouldn't be a problem. None of, if, you, if you were, this code all works. So if you were running this on a real device you wouldn't have any problems closing the application and running it. And if you're running it on a real device, you can even click the stop and play buttons, and it won't erase all the data. The only time that this data here gets erased is if you actually delete the application. Even if your app is on the App Store and you release an update, and the user updates the application, uh, the NS user defaults will still be saved, as the application never actually got deleted. I hope you found this tutorial interesting, and if you've got any questions, and I'm sure with a tutorial like this you will, uh, just comment on this video, or message us directly through YouTube, or through our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com, or even our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash 99centsappdevelopment. I will do later tutorials on how to check what the value of something is, so I might want to save a number of how many times my application has been opened, and then check how many to maybe show I rate my app alert, and all of that sort of stuff, and I will show you how to do those in further tutorials. But if you do have any immediate questions, do feel free to comment or message us, because I'm sure you will have questions. And be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, or find it interesting, and see you next time.